Yes, friends, what's poppin'? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News, this on the day of the match day. Yes, I know. Of course, Chelsea News is here every day, mate. Every single day on the channel. I look around, see what's being said. Social media, general football media. Bring it on down here for you in one nice, neat, little, lovely package, asserting my opinion, giving you the facts, but more importantly, as always, asking for your opinion down in the comment section. We've got an awesome community here at Football Therapy where everyone talks about Chelsea and other stuff down in the comments. So if you want to become part of that, if you dig the content, then I'll welcome you to subscribe to this channel, Football Therapy. We're nearly at 180 thousand subscribers which of course is mental and you could be the difference to get me over that glass ceiling of 180,000 subscribers so thank you for subscribing if you choose to do so hit the bell and why not like the video while you're at it go on put the graft in mate put the graft in like and subscribe all right let's get into it so today we're going to talk about strikers john duran injured chelsea not gonna buy him hopefully maybe callum wilson for 18 million pounds Ooh. Could he be Olivier Giroud 2.0 in terms of a January transfer signing? Mm, we'll talk about that a little bit as well. Breuer, he could still go. Seems wild, really, but he has been off the boil. He has been off the boil. Will he start tonight? Probably. In fact, that's where we're going to start right now. Chelsea's lineup, probable lineup, against Aston Villa tonight in the FA Cup. So let's jump over and look at the lineup that I've built. It's a quick turnaround from the semi-final against Middlesbrough, but I do see the same players starting Bar Mudrick out for Conor Gallagher. So Petrovic back in goal, De Sassi at right back. Hopefully Chile can start again at left back. Thiago Silva, can he play again? I don't know, hopefully. The guy's pushing 40, but he's got that magic juice. Colwell next to him. I see Caicedo starting, Enzo in the left number eight. Eight, and Conor Gallagher coming into the right number eight. Of course, we saw Cole Palmer occupying that space against Middlesbrough, which was a hella offensive tactic. Cole Palmer will move over to the right wing. Sterling will move over to his native left wing, which of course means Mudrick has been dropped. And then Breuer can start up top as a striker. Right, in terms of injuries, we know Nkunku and Gusto are doing their rehabilitation, but I don't expect them to feature in this game personally. Now, many of you will be calling out for Noni Madweke to start on the right wing or maybe play a 4-2-3-1 where we see Cole play in the number 10 and Noni start on the right. And maybe we'll see that, but personally, though Noni Medwerke has been very good and a contributing player of late, I think we'll play a 4-3-3, and because Noni can't play left wing and because Cole can't play left wing, I think you just have to start Cole Palmer over him every time. But I do think Noni Medwerke will feature in this game. And though, though Broy is being linked with a move away, I do see him starting this game, even if it's a little bit of a shop window to be like, someone loan him for the next six months with an option to buy. You know what, let's move on and talk about Armando Breuer. I'm going to cite some tweets now from CFCPYS on X. Chelsea expecting further approaches for Breuer around the 30 to 35 million pound mark with Fulham in the mix. And this is coming from CBS's Ben Jacobs. Now I feel bad for Breuer because he wants to play for Chelsea, he does have potential, but he knows he's being in the shop window at the moment, and clearly he's an emotional kid, like when he doesn't score goals it gets to him, and you can't, well you'd imagine all this noise in the media is doing nothing for his performances, he probably doesn't even know what he's playing for, is he playing for a move, is he playing for a chance to get a proper chance at Chelsea, you know what's going on for him here, it must be very confusing for the young lad, and I do feel bad for him, now 30 million pounds, 30 £35 million pounds is a lot of money. Of course, Chelsea reportedly wanted £50 million. Pounds. I think that came from the Telegraph from Matt Law, or maybe even the Athletic. Reputable sources. I can't see it happening. Look, he had a decent loan spell at Southampton. Of course, he was at Vitesse before that. He was doing the Mason Mount, essentially. But he had a good Premier League loan as a young striker, uh, up-and-coming, you know, Chelsea Academy graduate, all good stuff, and all, like, buying clubs generally look at Chelsea like... Yeah, their academy graduates are good. You know, it's good stock. You get good value out of those players. They're homegrown as well for your homegrown quota. So that sounds good to me. The thing is with Breuer, he remains to be raw potential. I've spoken about it recently on the channel. Like, him and Mudrick are kind of in the same genre of player at the moment. Young clearly have tools to play their role really, really well. But for one reason or another, it's not working. I think with Mudrick, he's just really undercoached and he's overthinking things. I think with Breuer, it's a confidence thing. And look, to be honest, 30 million, 35 million is probably in the sweet spot. 
I think Ian Martson for 35 million might end up looking like a snip for Dortmund, or at least good value. Because a lot of people think, mm, look, this guy was in the championship last season, he hasn't really played this season. Fair enough, Dortmund can see potential, but he's already gone over to Dortmund, Ian Martson, and played amazing in two games. He's playing this new sort of Trent role, inverting into the midfield for Dortmund. And for a really young, talented player who can play a sort of niche role in different positions, I think Dortmund, come the end of the season, might go... Thank you very much. Here's your 35 million quid plus your two million pound loan fee. So, you know, a couple of months ago, if you said to me, Jan, Chelsea are going to get 37 million quid for Ian Martin, I'd be like, thank you very much. I thought we were going to get nowhere near the 31.5 million pound bid that we accepted from Burnley, but it looks like we're going to get more. But respect to the kid, he looks like he's worth it. Alonso Bria is different. Strikers often cost more, but Strikers that are scoring goals. I think Bria's got two goals this season for Chelsea. It's tough, man. Look, if he goes to a West Ham or an Aston Villa or something, then I wish him all the best. Maybe Chelsea will even have a buyback clause in there. He's on a long contract, but I think perhaps there's a mood inside Stamford Bridge that I think, mm, we're not sure about this guy anymore. When, of course, for such a long time, bro, there was reports about how Chelsea believe that this kid is the one. You know, we I've referenced it before, so forgive me if you've heard me say this, but, you know, interviews of Raheem Sterling saying, he's picked him out saying, people don't know about Armando Bruyer yet. This guy's the truth. Like, he's ridiculous. He's ridiculously fast as well, and this guy is just so direct and strong. You know, Chelsea fans thinking, oh, direct, strong, ruthless towards goal, Diego Costa. You know, we all wanted that, didn't we? And maybe he's still in there, so it's a really difficult one to navigate. Especially when you look at just how turbulent and weird Chelsea have been. It's hard for anyone at the best of times. So, let me know what you think. Comment it down below. 30 million quid for Bria. Would you take it and move on? Do you think we'd regret it? Let me know. Right, we're going to stick on the strikers. And apparently Chelsea and Duran is quiet. No intention to proceed for an injured player. No bid, no negotiation, not advancing. And this is being cited via Fabrizio Romano. Cool. Feeling good about that? Well, he's not going to start tonight against Chelsea, young John Duran. I got nothing against the kid. Clearly, he's very talented, looking for more opportunities. But if you watched my video yesterday, I was just losing my mind over this. Why would we consider this kid that's, you know, got getting yellow cards left, right and centre, hasn't scored that many goals, and it's just another young potential. We are just bored of young potential. Can we just get a freaking goal scorer? Don't get me wrong. Generally, I like the project. I think long term, this might serve us really well. Young players sort of coming of age together and playing together for a long, long time. Hopefully making a new golden generation, maybe. But it's clearly evident that we need some seniority, some experience in there. Look, man, it's just we've just missed a trick there. We needed one or two, and we'll speak about Callum Wilson in just a moment. But I was really against John Duran, especially because it cost like, you know, they've just bought him for 18 million quid. Chelsea come to buy him mid-season. They're going to charge us, what, 35, 40 million quid, aren't they, Aston Villa? And for a kid who just doesn't score, all getting loads of yellow cards, and it's just another potential striker, I'm really, really worried about that. Anyway, unfortunately for the kid, he's got an injury. He'll be out for a few weeks. That's been confirmed by Aston Villa manager Unai Emery. So therefore, Chelsea have pumped the brakes a little bit. Understandably, in regards to looking at this young striker in terms of a new forward acquisition, I just feel so much better that we don't do this. I'm sure that many of you feel the same. Although, as always, I put it out to you guys. Comment down below. How do you feel about Chelsea walking away from John Duran? Are you also relieved? Or do you think we're going to rue the day that we didn't get this young striker. Comment down below, let's move on, and let's talk about Callum Wilson. Alright, so this is coming from multiple reports, multiple journalists across multiple publications. Callum Wilson could be available this month or in the next few days of the transfer window before it shuts for as little as 18 million pounds. That's right, one eight, 18 million pounds. Now, Callum Wilson is a good Premier League goalscorer. We were, in fact, linked to him when he was still playing for Bournemouth before he moved to Newcastle United. He was an England international. He was playing for England. I'm not sure if he gets call-ups now. He's in his 30s. I think he's very close to 32 years old, currently 31, about to turn 32. And he's not a long-term option. 
But his goal scoring record for Newcastle is better than one in two, and that's for Newcastle. They're not necessarily like creating ridiculous amounts of chances, so that could get even better at a club like Chelsea. He's confident, he believes in himself, he can navigate the league well. Yes, he has injury issues, but you'd have to say he'd be good for strikers around him, like a Nico Jackson, learning from him. And generally, I'm warming to it, and as I speak about it out loud, I think I like it. We signed Giroud in January, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we did, for I think maybe £18 million, the exact same fee, for who was about 31, 32 years old. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks. Giroud worked out great. In fact, Giroud is currently bagging right now for me then, still at 36 years old or something, possibly pushing 37. Amazing scenes, really. Superb. Milan have done so well out of Chelsea. It's kind of a nice story, though. It would be an interesting one to navigate, because Callum Wilson, he'll want probably good wages. I'm trying to think how much wages he'd want. He can't be on that much at Newcastle United. In fact, we'd probably offer him maybe slightly more than the youngsters get, say 120k a week. He'd probably say he'd take that at Chelsea and maybe have a chance to win cups this season. In fact, the way Newcastle are going, turbulent right now, he might see Chelsea as a club trending up, where Newcastle is not currently trending up. Of course, as well, they have another striker, a better striker, a younger striker in Alexander Izak, who apparently Chelsea were looking at, but who would not be sold by Newcastle United. And in a way, for the moment, just to sort of see us over for right now, maybe Callum Wilson is a good option. The problem is, how long a deal would he want? Would he sign an 18 month deal with Chelsea? Because maybe Chelsea can break their Project 2030 eight year contracts for young players for this instance. And you know, you wouldn't upset young players who want slightly lesser wages for a guy who comes in on perhaps just an 18 month deal. That's the kind of rule bending that Chelsea might want to do rather than, you know, sign a superstar on a five year deal on 300k a week, that would upset the apple cart. I'm very interested to see how this could go, because maybe there's a deal to be done with a loan. I know Newcastle are really, really walking the tightrope of uh, FFP or profit and sustainability rules at the moment, and maybe just the case of loaning him to Chelsea with an option to buy, with um, us taking his wages, and us also paying a small loan fee, that might even be enough for Newcastle to think, that's helpful, we'll just start Isaac. We are no longer in cups, I don't think, there might be in the FA Cup, but we're no longer in, you know, the uh, Champions League, the League Cup, Isaac can see us over the line, let's just get Wilson on the line to Chelsea, and it might even increase his value to someone else buy him in the summer for 20 million quid. I wonder if that's doable, because if that's doable, it's starting to sound more and more and more appropriate for Chelsea. Let me know what you think. As always, guys, I'm very interested in your opinion. Would you take Callum Wilson to Chelsea for £18 million? And how, what deal would you accept? Like, how long a contract? What wages? Do you think it'd be good for Nico Jackson? Maybe Brewer if he stays? Um, I mean, he's got a pretty elite goal-scoring record in the Prem, and I just wonder if you put him in a Chelsea team, because statistically, the numbers are staggering in terms of how many chances Chelsea create. I think we've created the second most big chances in the league behind Liverpool. So that's more than Man City. <laughs> I was going to say Arsenal, but Arsenal are a bit stodgy this season. I was going to say Man United, but meh. Maybe it's more. It's impressive that you know Tottenham score a lot under Ange. We create more big chances than Tottenham. Pep Guardiola City. Stick Callum Wilson in there for a little bit. See how it goes. Anyway, I'll put it out to you guys. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And uh, hopefully see you guys back here soon. Peace.